And we did a lot of outdoor things, yeah. He was very active, very, very active. Oh, here's a, this is out there on the pond. My husband was a family practitioner. He was a second doctor in Wasilla. He delivered babies. He saw all kinds of uh, cases and he was an avid hockey player. He ran the Iditarod in 1981. He came in 25th among 50 something mushers. He always was outdoors hiking, hunting, fishing. <laughs> This is us blueberry picking. He was 60 when he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. It started to metastasize immediately throughout his body. And when it was in his brain, I felt that we should go into hospice care because the end was going to come pretty soon. There's only one hospice agency in the valley, so I thought that if we went into hospice, we would get pain, good pain management, and I would get the kind of support that I was hoping I would get. My husband entered a hospice on a Friday, and the intake nurse came, and she took down, she didn't really meet him. She took down the information and uh, filled out all the papers, and then on her way out the door, she said she was leaving for her vacation and we would have received the pain medicine on Monday. And then Monday came, but none of the, the medicine didn't come. It was supposed to be delivered by the pharmacy, but it didn't come. So I called them and I said, uh, we didn't get the pain medication. And they said, oh, well, we can't get a hold of the doctor because he's sleeping because he works at night at the hospital. On Saturday, he said to me, I thought I was going to get pain relief when we got into a hospice. It was, I think, on Monday that I found a, another fentanyl patch from another oncologist that he had been seeing in New York. So I slapped it onto him along with some other fentanyl. Pa I mean, I was just desperate. Tuesday, finally, we got the methadone pills. Wednesday, my husband became semi-conscious and could not swallow. So I called hospice and I said, could I have liquid methadone? They said, okay, well, um, well, when I called that evening, I said, where is it? It's not at the pharmacy. They said, well, we still can't get a hold of the doctor because he's sleeping. Well, I was furious. So I called up the social worker at hospice and I told her what happened. And she said, you need to talk to the director. The director did get the liquid methadone to us the next day on a Thursday, and my husband died late Friday night, just after midnight. So this was hospice, Matsu Regional Hospice, who we signed up to be part of, thinking we would get pain management, who we'd get emotional support, and we didn't. It broke my heart because I was the one who pushed to get hospice because I thought we would get the support that we needed. And it just broke my heart when he said, I thought I was going to get the pain relief, that I, that I would be feeling better. But the biggest thing that concerns me is that don't they have a conscience? Didn't that doctor have a conscience when he couldn't, he knew he had a dying patient who needed pain management, yet he was unavailable? I find that just horrifying. But I'm sure there are a lot of cases that go by that nothing's been done, and these agencies just get away with it, which is really criminal. I just hope it doesn't ever happen again to somebody else.